What do the numbers 42 and 80, Arizona, shipping containers, the border, and Thomas Jefferson have to do with each other? Well, in the course of a few minutes, I'll explain. Hi everyone, I'm Gardner Goldsmith for MRC TV. The numbers 42 and 80 are well known to those following the immigration debate this week. The number 42 pertains to Title 42, the federal hot potato that Delphic Supreme Court Chief Justice John Roberts on December 19th decided to block the Biden administration from no longer enforcing. And to be more specific, it's about Section 262 of Title 42 of the U.S. Code, which, quote, prohibits entry into the United States when the director for disease control believes there is a serious danger to the introduction of a communicable disease into the United States. President Donald Trump invoked that in March of 2020 as a way to translate popular concerns over the COVID pandemic spread, as they called it, into purportedly tougher federal border security. Now, by contrast, Joe Biden's recent double talk in which he extended the so-called pandemic emergency to give college loan holders even more time to avoid payments while he simultaneously claimed there was not a pandemic emergency that required stricter border enforcement. Well, that's inspired proportional controversy. And as I noted earlier, has led to the bizarre caricature of a sitting chief justice claiming the power to tell the executive in chief how he has to continue enforcing a federal statute. It all makes one wonder how a nation with supposed separation of powers can see a judge telling the chief executive of the executive branch that he has to keep enforcing a statute when said judge has no executive power and can't force anything, whether people like it or they don't. And all of that has a powerful bearing on the other number in our presentation, 80. That is emblematic of $80 million, the amount that was spent laying end-to-end -end 900 shipping containers along portions of Arizona's 370-mile border with Mexico. As Olivia Land reports for the New York Post, that state-erected makeshift border wall is coming down. According to court documents filed at the U.S. District Court in Phoenix on Wednesday, Republican Governor Doug Ducey has reached an agreement with the Biden administration to cease installing the containers in the Coronado National Forest. And of course, that latter term presents yet another red flag to those who bother caring about the so-called rules of the U.S. Constitution. And that's the fact that in the Constitution, there's no provision for national forests. The feds are actually only allowed to run three types of land. Washington, D.C., i.e. the 10 square mile region for the capital, military garrisons, and territories. That's it. And when territories enter the Union, they're not required to cede land to the feds. And even if they could, there's no provision in the Constitution allowing for the feds to care for said ceded tracts, even if they were ceded. Adds land, quote, the agreement also states that Arizona must remove the finished portions of the wall by January 4th without damaging natural resources. Well, anyone familiar with economics knows that the statement natural resources requires yet another pause because natural resources is an amorphous term left open to the arbitrary whim of the political entities. In reality, a resource is something to which individual human beings ascribe their own value based on their own subjective determinations of whether it helps their lives. The only way to know this particular value of a resource, any resource, is to take the power to define and price it out of the hands of politicians and put it into people's hands, in the market, where people are free to show their interests and priorities. This decentralization, by the way, allowing for priority revelation and pricing, 
Well, it also has a bearing on the Arizona border battle. Governor Ducey's retreat in the face of the Biden administration's lawsuit over this wall, which, by the way, Ducey began constructing in early December. Well, this reflects either Ducey's ignorance of the U.S. Constitution or his fear that should he actually operate by the Constitution, the feds will pounce on him with even more unconstitutional aggression. Simply put, during a time of non-war, the Constitution grants the federal government absolutely no power over immigration or national border enforcement. Conservatives generally were averse to discussing this when a Republican like Trump was in office. But now, as Biden reveals his antipathy for so-called border security, some people within the constitutional conservative wing of the GOP are beginning to recognize reality. As I've reported in previous MRC TV pieces and on video, the words immigration and immigrant are not in the U.S. Constitution. Indeed, Texas's state constitution, which was approved in 1869, included an article establishing a Bureau of Immigration in it. Now, if the people of Texas believed Congress had the power to control immigration, why would they bother creating their own Bureau of Immigration in their state constitution? Well, the answer, of course, is because Congress didn't have any such enumerated power, and the only reason contemporary Americans fight over what the feds should do at the border is because of a corrupt 1875 Supreme Court ruling in the case of Chi Lung v. Freeman, which was a challenge to a California statute imposing a charge on boat owners who were facilitating ingress of Chinese women, which unfortunately were seen as likely prostitutes by many politicians. With that ruling, in 1875, the justices simply made up federal immigration control, saying in part this absolute nonsense, quote, the passage of laws which concern the admission of citizens and subjects of foreign nations to our shores belongs to Congress and not to the United States. This upside down ruling led to federal passage of the Page Law that very year. And that was a statute that restricted lower priced Chinese immigrant labor and established from that point on that the states would suffer the loss of their constitutionally granted power over immigration. Which of course brings us back to Arizona, to conservatism and to federalism within this current border controversy. The debate over federalism and state powers isn't over. Regardless of what Biden claims, regardless of politically appointed judges, as long as honest people can cite the U.S. Constitution, they can point out the so-called rules when there's no declared war. As many conservatives feel their blood boil over Biden's border policies, they might start to see the wisdom in adhering to the Constitution when it comes to those borders. After all, don't those politicians swear oaths to uphold it? I didn't sign it. They're the ones who swear. You see, these are state borders in a confederated system, and the U.S. Constitution offers clear guidance during this period of intense federal malfeasance. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Thanks for going back into history with me, and please, if you value these videos, please share them with friends. Make sure that you're subscribed over at Rumble because they don't censor us there. And of course, we'll see you in the chat at Rumble and at YouTube in the uh, comments section of both video platforms. Uh, YouTube, they sometimes censor us. It's difficult. And we'll see you at the MRC TV page on Facebook. We'll see you on Twitter as well. We'll see you on TikTok and Instagram and Parler. And please visit MRCTV.org. That's MRCTV.org. You still have a few days before the end of the year if you want to donate and help support the work that we do at the Media Research Center overall. It's uh, an amazing group of people. Uh, you can also find me on Gab. I'm at Gardner Goldsmith. And on Twitter, I'm at Gard Goldsmith. For MRC TV, I'm Gardner Goldsmith.